Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here and I'm back with a new Laserdiscs pickup video. Now I haven't done a video on the Laserdisc format for about a year and um, the last one I did I shut off my entire collection at the time and just recently I picked up a few more titles. Um, I go through strange phases with the format, sometimes I don't buy any for like six months and suddenly it gets strange urge to go buy more. Um, as you can see, I'm in a different room to my usual place, I've set up my editing suite in a different room of the house, um, so I've got two more to set up, and at the moment I'm working on Alien 3 Retrospective, which will be out uh, maybe next week, week after, <laughs> depends what mood I'm in. Um, so today I'm going to show you some of the titles I've got recently. Um, so first off, we have Lawmo Man, the director's cut. Now this um, is pan and scan format, I think it's a TV cut they put on Laserdisc, you can get it on DVD. Uh, I've talked to my friend uh, Matthew Buck, who's uh, known as Film Brain on YouTube, and he's got the DVD of this, and he says terrible like transfer. But this, I watched it earlier because I only turned up today, and uh, it's not bad. It's not. It's not bad at all. So I think whoever did the transfer to DVD didn't do a very good job. Uh, I think it's probably just a sloppy conversion of this one. Um, I will do insert shots to show you a bit more detail on the back and the front cover. Um, but yeah, I, I've not seen the director's cut before, so I'm hoping it's okay, because I quite like the theatrical cut. Um, I'm trying to hunt down the special edition of this uh, laser disc, um, but it's a, little bit more hard, it's a little bit more harder to come by than this one's quite common. But um, only, only like three pounds I paid for this, so not bad. Next we have Masters of the Universe, the Japanese release. Uh, it's a widescreen edition. It's the only one you can get in widescreen on the format. Um, very cool sleeve. But surprisingly, no chapter stops for a release from 1995. Uh, no trailer either, and the transfer isn't particularly good. It's um, The print's very dirty, and it's nowhere near as good in terms of colour uh, compared to the US pressing, well, which, which is basically pan and scan. Uh, which I do have, which I'll show in a minute. But um, very cool cover, but not a very good pressing. The US release of Masters of the Universe, it's pan and scan. Um, it's got the typical Warner Brothers grey sidebar, which is I'm not really a fan of. Um, picture and sound is very impressive. Uh, chapter stops as well, which is you know, it's older than the Japanese one, which has none. Um, not particularly common. Um, if you're a UK buyer, it may be more difficult to track down, but you can probably import it from America and if someone's going to ship it out to you for a, you know, a reasonable price, then I'd highly recommend picking it up. Barton Fink, US pressing, uh, pan and scan. There is a widescreen edition, uh, which is I think 166 aspect ratio. So you're not losing much picture when you get the pan and scan release. Um, picture and sound is very good. Um, there was a little bit of laser rot on beginning of side B, um, but it kind of cleared itself up, so I was quite pleased with that. I only paid like, I think maybe a pound for this off eBay, so not bad. Uh, it's a very good film. Uh, the first two acts are quite straightforward, then it goes all bonkers in the third act. The Jungle Book, Stephen Summers, possibly second feature film, I can't remember. Um, I really enjoyed this as a kid, and um, and it's, it's kind of played quite straight. It's uh, Jason Scott Lee as Mowgli, as he's older. Um, it's a very good soundtrack, very good photography. Picture transfer is not too bad, it's a bit, a bit of colour bleeding. And there was a little bit of crosstalk as well, so I think that was a mastering defect. Um, but I don't think it comes with, it no, it doesn't come with, um, it doesn't come with a trailer or anything like that. Very bare bones release, Dolby surround sound. But um, not too bad. I mean, it doesn't, it's a pretty common title, so. Uh, you can probably get it for three or four pounds. Now recently in Cambridge they opened up a new uh, record shop called Black Barn Records uh, which sells like LPs and movie memorabilia. And I dropped them a message saying, you know, do you have any laser discs? Uh, and they said, oh we've got a couple out back but we've got thousands in a warehouse. And I was like, what? So I sent them a list of stuff I want to get hold of and hopefully they'll get back to me with some of the titles I'm after. But when I went in and I had some out back, I picked up a few from them. So we've got the Criterion collection of Lawrence of Arabia, which I, which I think they charged me like £10 for, so that was not, wasn't too bad. Um, I think it's yeah, it's yeah, I think it might be the extended cut, possibly. I've not watched this all the way through. Um, it's got kind of it's over eight sides, so there's a lot of discs in here. 
Uh, the weird thing is because um, I was checking out the picture quality to make sure there's no laser rot because some of the Criterion sets of the earlier ones did have, did have issues with laser rot. And um, my friend Duncan was here and he hadn't seen much of the laser disc format. And um, he was just watching one of the titles and going, oh, this is a bit crap, or he's a bit like a bootleg. But then I put this on and he was like, oh, this is pretty good. Um, which is considering, you know, pretty good considering this was from 1989, this pressing, so it's, uh, it's not bad, not bad at all. Another one I picked up from the record shop was Dark Crystal, widescreen edition from, um, I thought it was a Japanese release because it's got a Japanese logo. But it's actually a US release, just released in Japan. And this has put some stickers on it, which is a bit strange. Um, it's a remastered edition, doesn't come with anything, no, no trailers or Dolby digital sound, it's just Dolby surround sound. Picture transfer is not too bad. Um, it's obviously, I'm used to the, I used to have a super bit DVD, so I was quite used to that. But seeing this is a bit of a step down, but um, I mean, for like five quid, I thought it was a pretty good deal. And the last title I picked up from that record shop in Cambridge is Nixon. Um, so I recently watched um, JFK, uh, Oliver Stone's other kind of biopic movie, and uh, that was fantastic. And um, so I've not seen Nixon before, so um, the reviews are pretty solid. And it does come with a few extra bits and bobs. It's quite a lot of supplementary material, which I'll show with a close-up. But um, it's a very long film, because I was going to watch it the other night. And um, I looked at the running time, and it said 191 minutes. I was like, oh, fuck that. Especially because and it's the summer as well. You don't want to sit in a boiling hot room watching a film that's three and a half hours. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing this when I have the time. Another Stephen Summers movie, Deep Rising. Um, this film is proper schlock. It's, it's very entertaining but very silly. The CGI is pretty bad. It's a bit dated in areas. Some shots, the CGI is not bad, and some, in some areas it looks really good. Um, it's done by ILM as well, so they must have done it on their lunch break. Um, doesn't come with anything. Comes with Dolby Digital Sound. There's, there is a DTS release as well. This is just a regular one. Um, this is a very common title, but the DTS one commands a bit more money. Um, got this for £5, so. Pretty good deal. Picture transfers, not too not too bad either. It's a late pressing, so most of the laser discs in the late 90s were picture was always generally pretty good. Daylight by Rob Cohen. Um, I did have this on the DTS format, but um, I sold it ages ago for like maybe £30 maybe, so it's a pretty good deal, but I got it back again, um, but the Dolby Digital one for like £5. Now this film is um, the first 20 minutes are amazing when the whole explosion, the whole, you know, a whole underground or the tunnel all explodes and stuff and the surround sound is incredible, it actually blows, blows me away every time I hear it. Um, but the rest of the movie is a bit underwhelming. I think the guy who wrote it, the guy who wrote this wrote uh, Dante's Peak, which is a better film. But uh, for five quid, you know, I'm not going to complain. Next up is Wolf with Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, I'd never seen this film before till recently. Uh, I remember when it came out as a kid, but um, I never really got around to watching it. I thought the film was pretty good. Um, it had a wonderful score, and uh, the photography is sublime. Uh, unfortunately, the disc did have laser rock on disc two. Now, this is pressed by Sony, who are the worst at laser disc, but their picture transfers are always good. <laughs> it's like their pressing plants are crap. Um, but thankfully, the seller had another copy, which was rock free and pressed by another by another uh, manufacturer. Um, the Rock Free one had this font at the top here in yellow. So there may be a good indication if you're looking for a Rock Free copy, check, make sure the picture has that in yellow instead of white, because the white one's the Sony one and the yellow one's probably a Mitsubishi or maybe a Pioneer, I'm not entirely sure. Next up is a Predator widescreen edition. Now I have this on DVD and Blu-ray. I thought, hmm, I saw this going for like four pound on eBay and no one outbid me so I got it pretty cheap. Some people are charging like £10 or £20 you know on different auctions so you'd be mad to pay £20 for this. Um, it's, the transfer's not too bad. Um, so production notes on the back there. Chapter stops, no trailers unfortunately. Um, the print though they used is um, a bit dusty and dirty so at first I thought oh no it's got laser on but it was just a dirty print. But um, the transfer is not too bad, and the sound is great. So those epic you know, um, action set pieces are sound brilliant on on this format. 
Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions. Um, this is a uh, director's cut, well, unrated director's cut. Uh, comes with Dolby Digital surround sound. Uh, it's also a gatefold release as well. Let's get it there. I think most of the extras were transferred over to DVD and Blu-ray, I believe. Um, I've not seen this film as of yet. Um, I got it ages ago, still haven't got around to watching it. Um, there's quite a lot of reviews I've seen online recommend it, so um, I'm sure it's pretty good. Um, it does look interesting. Got it pretty cheap as well. This is a very common title, so don't pay £10 or more for this film. Next up is Saving Private Ryan. Um, it's a Japanese release. Um, the US one often goes for a little bit more than the Japanese one. I don't know why. Um, it's very obviously late release as well, I think late 90s. Um, Picture transfer is very impressive. Um, THX mastered one, Dolby Digital surround sound. Not a gatefold, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if it comes with any trailers or anything like that. No. On the side there. But um, masterpiece this film is really good. The opening 20 minutes will just, you know, it's a good demo piece for, to show off your surround sound. Uh, now a chap who follows me on YouTube has a latest disc collection and a, I, think he's, I think he was getting rid of some of his titles and he sent me a message on Facebook, he's called Istavan, and um, he sent me another titles over for free which I was like wow amazing thank you. Uh, he sent me Under Siege 2, um, now if you're a laser disc uh, collector you probably know this one's prone to laser rot and so is this one. <laughs> So this is a title you must avoid on the format, um, but you can get it clean, laser rock free uh, Japanese release, and also the Japanese one has Dolby Digital surround sound. This one doesn't. I think Warner Brothers didn't want to pay the licensing fee. So yeah, unfortunately, um, I've kept this one because um, I'm going to be working on a laser disc format video, so I've captured some footage of this to demonstrate laser rock. So. This will probably go in the bin <laughs> after, after I've finished using it. The Last Boy Scout, directed by Tony Scott, written by Shane Black. Um, I thought it was a pretty good film. It was a bit, it took a while to get going. Um, but um, I think maybe Shane Black got paid like two million dollars, I think, for this script. One of the highest amounts at the time, possibly. I can't remember, someone probably correct me on that. Uh, picture transfer is not too bad. Uh, the sound is okay. Uh, just a regular widescreen release with Dolby surround sound. Um, this is a very common title. You can probably get this for like two or three pounds anyway. Um, so yeah, not a bad film and can't complain because it was for free. Next up we have Nemesis by Albert Pien. Uh, it's a special edition release, has making of and theatrical trailer. Uh, widescreen edition. Uh, I still haven't seen this film, so I apologise, Istvan. He sent me these ages ago, but I still haven't got around to watching it. Uh, I will watch it soon. It's, I think it's apparently one of uh, Albert Pion's better movies, because um, he's made quite a lot of crap over the years. But this one's kind of one of his, it's, it's very much a cult classic now, this movie. But uh, I will get around to watching it soon. He did send me the Abyss um, box set. It's like a CAV box set. It was one of the first THX mastered releases. And it was brand new sealed. I was like, well, this is incredible, it's in mint condition. And um, I checked the um, Laserdisc database, and it's one of the titles which has laser rot. And it has, I think it had been pressed by different companies. And um, opened it all up, went to grab some footage for my Laserdisc format video, and it was the whole thing laser rot throughout. It's just like, as soon as it went out of the pressing plant, it was fucked. Uh, so I was gutted by that. So. But I had to go in the bin, I'm afraid. Um, you know, because you know, I've had so many laser discs over the years, maybe like a stack about this amount that had laser rot, and um, there's no point keeping them because no, you can't sell them. Because if you do sell them, people just go, "Well, it's you know defective," and they send it back to you, it's a waste of money. So chuck them in the bin, takes up space. Um, I think about a year ago, or two, no, maybe about two years ago, I. Um, I was a bit low on cash, and so I sold off my Superman laser discs. You know, heaven forbid. Um, I've got quite a lot of money for them, but now I've kind of got myself out of the red, as it were. Um, I managed to find them again, but a lot cheaper <laughs> than I originally paid for. Um, there's a couple I'm missing, which I did have originally. I liked some Japanese releases, but I've got back uh, the US one. Um, 
I've got sorry, I've got back the US releases and one Japanese one. So Superman the movie, widescreen edition. Um, picture and sound quality is not brilliant. It's quite an old pressing. Um, looks a bit like VHS to be honest. It's a little bit sharper than VHS, obviously, but uh, it's not going to blow your socks off when you see it. Um, just regular chapter stops, no extras. Um, I did think it had laser rot. Uh, side side A on disc one had quite a few speckles at the beginning. I thought, oh no, it's fucked. But um, this is a dirty print. The print's not very. It wasn't in very good condition in the early nineties till they remastered it. Um, so this is you know this is the actual cut. Comes with the original sur surround sound mix. I know many of the fans, including I, were a bit annoyed by the changes they'd done to the Dolby Digital Mix that added new sound effects and stuff and but didn't, get, but didn't give us the option to choose between the original sound and the new one but thankfully when they, re, when they did the um, Blu-rays they included the original sound mix but this is you know a nice little collector's piece so Superman 2 uh, comes with um, theatrical trailer as well pressing from 1996 um, I wanted to get this one again because I wasn't too happy with the Dolby Digital uh, sound mix on the DVD and Blu-ray. It sounded really odd how the music was mixed and um, often the music was coming out of the centre channel instead of the left and right. In some cases, not all the time. Um, I think I just took the 70mm Dolby 6 track and just put it on uh, the DVD and Blu-ray and I don't think they did a good job at the time. So I wanted to get the original kind of Dolby surround mix again. Just for collector's sake, I suppose. Next up is Superman 3, the widescreen edition. Uh, comes with a uh, theatrical trailer as well. Uh, pressed at the same time as Superman 2. Sli slightly better transfer than Superman 2. I think the Superman 3 print was in better condition. Um, the, I remember, I recall the surround sound mix being a bit flat compared to Superman 2, but the Blu ray release of this is fantastic. Great picture and sound. Um, but this was going as part of a deal, so I thought, well, I can't just ignore this one, just add it to the collection. Uh, Superman 4 did come in pan and scan and widescreen, so first up we have the pan and scan release. Very similar to the Masters of the Universe sleeve. These laser display came out at the same time. Um, one of the photos there is from, from the deleted footage that no one's ever seen. It's how stupid Warner Brothers are. It's putting deleted footage on the back of the uh, sleeve. Uh, picture transfer is not too bad, and it sounds very nice, and it comes with chapter stops, but um, this is the US theatrical cut, so it's missing two scenes, which are on the Japanese laser disc. So, we have Superman 4, the widescreen edition. Um, picture transfer is pretty shite. Uh, it's, it's on roughly the same time as the US release. Um, but people only really want this because it's in widescreen and it includes two of the scenes that were shown in the European and Asian cuts. So it has the tornado sequence where Christopher Reeve saves his own daughter. She looked kind of cameos in it and his son's in it as well. And um, a sequence where he stops a Russian missile. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, those scenes, I mean, those scenes did turn up on the DVD and Blu-ray, but they were incomplete. They're from a work print and the effects were very shoddy. Well shoddy by Superman's 4 standards. So um, this is the only way to get the European cut complete, as it were. But the widescreen, it's not the proper aspect ratio for, uh, for the film, because the film's shot on JDC scope, um, and it's 2351. But this is more like 220, maybe? Um, so it's not full widescreen, but uh, it's the best you can get, really. Well, there you are, folks. That's my latest pickups. I, as I said earlier, I will be doing a LaserDisc format video in the future, basically showing the pros and cons of the format, a uh, buyer's guide on what players to get, and showing you some of the picture quality as well, and titles with laser rot. Um, when trying to capture LaserDisc footage, it's always, it's never going to look exactly the same, because my player is quite a, a decent player. I have the Pioneer. CLD R7G, um, so it's got the latest kind of, well, second generation uh, 3D YC separation. For laser disc collectors listening, they probably will understand that, but everyone else is probably like, what the fuck? 
Um, so, and then running that through a scaler, it all looks lovely. But when you run it through a like, capture device, you're just going through at 480i and sort of you know, interlaced and stuff. And I have to do a lot of work to make it look kind of the same. Um, so whatever you see in the, in the upcoming video, you may think, oh, that looks a bit shit. Um, it doesn't really. I mean, once you've got all the right equipment, it all looks lovely. That's the thing about Laserdisc. You, know, you, you really need a decent scaler, you need a decent player. And also, it depends on the disc as well. You know, some discs are poorly manufactured. You know, the, the, the telecine job wasn't very good. So you have to be very kind of picky on what films you get. And if you want to kind of show off the format to a friend, then you know, just show them like a regular kind of widescreen title, which is you know maybe a bit hit and miss. They won't be very impressed. So if you show them something like um, actually, usually the pan and scan uh, titles look really nice because they use more of the scan lines. So, you know, things like Fortress with Christopher Lambert or like, you know, Barton Fink would look really nice because Pan and Scan is using more of the thing, but because it's not in widescreen, it doesn't look as good. So, you know, something like Star Wars 97 release, the special edition trilogy looks quite nice in the format. Or like Saving Private Ryan. Um, so anyway, I'm rambling here. But yes, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. I will be doing the Lazy Disc format video in a couple of months. So look out for that. Alright everyone, take care and goodbye.